Today we're here to discuss the inspection of tail shafts and stern bearings. So for today's inspection we're going to talk about the proper PPE and the hazards associated with this inspection. Um, the proper PPE will be the normal uh, hard hat gloves and everything you would wear on a normal inspection. The hazards that are associated with this type of inspection is uh, the inspection is mostly done in dry dock where the vessel is setting on blocks uh, uh, underneath the vessel and then the propeller, so overhead uh, type of uh, uh, hazards would be heavily associated with this inspection. For today's inspection, we're going to uh, decide which uh, assembly is required for the inspection today. Uh, today we got the uh, tapered shaft which is signified by the keyway. Um, there also is a flange shaft where the, the propeller is actually flanged onto the propeller itself. Uh, but for today it's going to be the tapered shaft. For the next part of the inspection, we're going to determine if the shaft needs to be drawn. Um, we're going to refer to the uh, applicable regulation, which would uh, most likely come out of C uh, 46 CFR 61. Um, and it's going to uh, determine whether or not it was a saltwater vessel, a freshwater vessel, whether the bearings are lubricated, oil lubricated, or water lubricated, or whether or not you can see damage and you're concerned. Um, and if you do find damage, the uh, the part you want to focus on is the keyway for any damage right around this area of the bearing. For the next part of the inspection, we're going to uh, look at which bearings they have and the uh, type of clearances they need for each bearing. Um, so for the bearing today, we're talking about a water-cooled or a cutlass type bearing. There also is an oil bearing, oil uh, lubricated oil bearing. Um, and for both of them, there's different clearances. You'll have to see what the manufacturer's recommendation is for each individual bearing. Next for the inspection, we're gonna verify the inboard seal assembly. On uh, the water seal, you should have some water coming in, but it shouldn't be pouring in. It should be a, a light drip every couple minutes, but for the oil lubricated ones, you shouldn't have any oil or anything underneath it. It should remain sealed. Uh, next for the inspection, we're going to visually examine the shaft. We're going to look for any undue wear and tear, any cracks or any surface uh, of rust or anything like that. Um, you can see that there is a little bit of wear and tear on this shaft. They have this shaft drawn out for maintenance. This portion of the shaft will normally be setting inside so you can see that it's kind of in a pristine condition with the edges a little bit of, of wear and tear. For the next part of the inspection, we're going to talk about visually or non-destructive testing of this shaft liner, um, usually 12 inches or 300 millimeters um, forward of the, uh, of the keyway right here. Um, the, uh, for non-destructive testing, normally it's conducted through mag particle testing or, or through dye penetrant, penetrant testing. For the next part of the inspection, we're going to look at satisfactory non-destructive testing of the shaft. We're going to look at from the bearing aft, including the keyway itself. Uh, we're going to look for surface cracks uh, or anything like that through mag particle testing or non, uh, uh, dye penetrant testing. So to continue with the inspection, we're going to look at both the stern tube bearing and the strut bearing. Um, walking over to the strut bearing, you're going to look at the visually look at the inside. You're going to see if you can see any uh, any clearance, any damage, or anything like that. Uh, if you have any visual indication that that um, that there's too much space or excess space in it, um, that's when you're going to to further have it uh, looked at and um, tested to see if the clearance is too too much. Um, this bearing itself is the one that will most likely suffer the damage um, versus this stern tube bearing. Next for the inspection, if we do find that uh, a bearing is uh, need needed to be uh, repaired, um, we're, for this type of bearing, uh, a cutlass bearing or a water cool bearing, we're going to have them either replace it or um, look at what needs to be to fix it. Um, for a lubricating oil bearing, we're going to have them follow their manufacturer's uh, recommendations on uh, uh, maintenance for it. Um, for oceans and coast cut wise vessels, we're going to have to have them follow 46 CFR 61. For uh, tips and considerations for this inspection, um, it would be ideal if the trainee was to attend a, a local shop or 
or, or where they were doing uh, maintenance or, or non-destructive testing on the shaft to gain more experience with this inspection. Um, to summarize inspections of tail shafts and stern bearings, uh, we've uh, went over hazardous conditions associated with the inspection, the proper PPE, um, determine the type and assembly and required inspection procedures, determine if the tail shaft needs to be drawn, we verified bearing type and clearance, um, we verified inboard seal assemblies, we've examined shafts visually, we examined uh, visually or NDT of liners if applicable, we've witnessed satisfactory NDT of required surfaces if applicable, we verified conditions and wear down of struts and bearings if applicable, required and oversaw re repairs as needed, and described any tips or unique considerations when inspecting tail shafts and stern bearings. If you have any questions, contact your local verifying officer for further information.